So hello everyone and welcome to the top 5 best maps of the November half 2 in Head in Time user created maps. Now of course this was supposed to be a top 10 but turns out there weren't even more than like 5 or 6 good maps released in the 2nd November half so a top 5 is all I can do. So starting off with an honorable mention that almost made it onto the list and then I'm really sad about it's Platform Panic by Mr. Brawls. The reason I wanted to bring this up is because this is a map that when you look at it, you go into the map and you start it up, you feel like, oh, the, the textures are nice. There's like signs talking to you. They talk way too much, but at least it makes it sound like there's a lot of thought that went into the map. And then you look around and there's all these different areas you can go to with all, it's like the map, that, an area that has springs in it. There's an area that has like, falling platforms, there's an area where you climb a tower, there's an area where you jump between uh, pillars and stuff like that, and you go like, oh man, this map's probably gonna be very awesome. But as it turns out, the actual gameplay is some of the most boring and repetitive gameplay I've ever seen in a map, where it's really just, you jump between platforms, that's the, that's the entire stage, you just jump between platforms. I mean, of course the map is called Platform Panic, but I was expecting a bit more than really just pressing the A button every now and then to jump between platforms. I don't know, it did, and it was way too long. It was way too much. Like for example, the part where you go up on the springboards. Why does the springboard part go on for like five minutes? Why is the pillar parts like five minutes long when the entire gameplay is exactly the same throughout? Oh, it's something that makes me really sad because this is this is someone who, who has the effort, who puts in the effort to make sure that maps look nice, who puts in the effort to make sure that there's ideas going on, that he wants to do stuff with different areas and different aspects, different mechanics, but it ends up being what we see right here. So yeah, that's a bit sad. Anyway, going up next, we have the fifth and the fifth spot on the list, which is Companion Fruit Time Rift by Idiotic Robotics. So this was one where the idea behind this was you have a fruit and you have to get the fruit through some sort of gauntlet with like maybe there's stuff on the way that tries to throw you off at one point or maybe there's just some bunch of uh, platforms that are going back and forth where you're gonna have to press buttons to make the platform move certain ways and you're gonna have to try and get the fruit to the specific spot where you're gonna blow up something or where you're gonna put it on a button. I really like the idea of using the fruit in a way to try and create a gameplay just surrounding getting a fruit from point A to point B. I really like that idea. And I also like some of the uh, gameplay mechanics that came into play, like the uh, buttons moving platforms around, like how you were doing this weird jump while you were having the dweller hat on. I like that as well. The reason why this wasn't higher on the list is A, it's not very long and B is also because yeah the, it doesn't actually use that many different mechanics you've got like the dweller mask and then you got platforms that move with buttons and that's pretty much everything that is in the stage I was hoping there'd be a bit more to do with the fruit but yeah next up we have oh before we go into the next one this one requires a hat the sonic hat created by Fatis which you can find, and if you have that hat, you can go into Time Rift Zone, a Sonic hat-centered Time Rift by Mr. Brawls, the same guy who made Platform Panic, so don't worry, Mr. Brawls, you're still on the list. So, this is a rift, I mean, I don't even need to talk too much about it, just look at it, look at it, it's, 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 it's great, it's great. Uh, it's got nice music, Platform Panic had also nice music, it was the windmill music from uh, Alpine Skyline. And here we have a piece of music from Sonic Unleashed, I think it is. And even though I wouldn't say that the stage has too many special mechanics in it, other than you just go really fast, I mean, that's enough. It, it's, it feels like this roller coaster type of map where you just keep going really fast. And it's also one of the very few rifts that I played multiple times because I wanted to see just how fast I could get. And in the end, I got like, after like five or six tries, I got like, uh, what was it, a 438 or 448 or something? Yeah, 448 or something. Pretty good. There was the the, the map tester only got a 529. <laughs> it was almost a minute slow. <laughs> anyway, what a great map. What a great map. Don't forget to keep to get the Sonic hat though, because we have the Sonic hat by Fatis. This is, this is not even a good map, but with it, amazing. Also, next up though, 
here we have the uh, big three like this time the top three are all really really good i mean if you go into this top three you could be like oh no i want i think the number three is actually number one you could say oh no number one is actually number three and you could keep moving these around and i wouldn't disagree with you too much because all these three maps that are falling right now are all really good in their own rights they're all doing something really well uh, and I just came up with my own number th uh, top three, but of course your top three could be different. Like I said, all these three maps are really good. But I have a number three, Snatcher's Keep by Sheriff Boyardee. So Snatcher's Keep is a so, sort of like story style maps where you keep having these like events happening. It's like you open the door at the start and you're like, oh, you're like, oh, scared. And you have Snatcher being like, ha 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 ha, what will you do in my big keep or whatever and then you enter it and there's a uh, like some fire stuff and you jump over that and there's what i really like about this map is that all these different flavors lying around like you have like i don't know there's like dirty laundry lying around there's a table some other stuff like there's like strategically placed uh doodads around the stage that i like i mean this is something that you don't even see in any uh, um time rift map time rift maps just have the platforms but if you go beyond time rift maps you can actually put flavor and spice into your stages like that. I also really like that it uses very different mechanics all the time and it has all these events happening like you would get trapped and then you fall down into a cell and you escape the cell or at the very end there's really psychedelic stuff is happening and also uses these different mechanics like I said like for example at one point you need to lower the water level in a room which I thought was amazing because I haven't seen that somewhere else but apparently you can do that so that's pretty good. So yeah Snatchers Keep really really nice map but next up we have another really nice map as you might expect we have um the express owls in gold leaf galaxy by flame lfh now it was a toss-up between this one and of course the other two but what i really liked about this map though is you take something like gold leaf galaxy and like i always say when you copy maps from other games you can't just copy the map one to one and expect it to be all right you also make need to make sure that it fits into head in time and i don't mean just story wise like why is this map a thing in head in time but also and more importantly mechanics wise and gameplay wise you also need to make sure that the map actually plays well in the hat in time environment and this what he did flame lfh in this map does both really nicely you have the uh, the owls running around you've got some crows running around they talk to you they all have they don't have voice lines but they all have um they all have some text where they talk to you, talk about the the stage where they're in, uh, the Gold Leaf Galaxy, and they, they talk to you a bit. I really like that as well. Uh, there's some... You can see that this... It's a bit of like Dead Bird Studio stuff is lying around, because the Dead Bird Studio characters are in there, like the Conductor. And you also have these different areas where you go to all of these different time pieces. Like this is a stage that actually has multiple time pieces where you can go into off into all these different directions and be greeted with time pieces in different places. You can you can collect ponds for a time pieces, you can collect vault tickets for a time piece. There's like two or three different branching paths you can go to to get a time piece. And there's a boss fight and it's actually a pretty cool boss fight that works almost exactly like the galaxy boss fight. Yeah, like an actual Super Mario Galaxy. That's pretty good, that's pretty good. We like that as well. Really neat and nice and enjoyable. And it also was quite challenging. I'm not going to say it was difficult, the boss fight and the place leading up to it, but at least it didn't feel like I was just holding forward to pressing a button. Like I had to actually focus on what I was doing, which is nice. Okay, but now you will probably all agree with me that it was really hard to decide between these three maps. Like I said, one of the top three. But I think, in my opinion, the next one clinches it out because it does what the other two have done and also creates a really nice environment and other than gold leaf galaxy it also manages to be completely original and of course it is the rocky plains by jason so not only does this map look terrible and have no music also if you fall into the acid your body dissolves and you're only a floating hat kid head you're basically head kid at that point. Also, what I really, really enjoyed about this map is the fact that I'm totally fucking with you guys. And number one is The Monsoon by Pasa Pillows. Now, The Monsoon is this 
giant mansion that you're in with all of these different rooms all over the place. All of these rooms, of course, have their different themes. Like you have the entrance hall, and you have like the the, the room where they gamble and stuff. And you have like the uh, the bedrooms and stuff. And you have like the lounge and all all of these different rooms with all of these different furniture in it. I think a lot. I, I don't even know how much of it is like. Um, custom textures and custom models like they might actually just be models from the game but used really really well used really really well i think there are a few custom models in there in the basement actually and it's it's not completely super open worldy you, you you only really have access to one room at a time and when you go into that room you find a button or something and then you go to the next room but it's also it's always this like challenge you go into a room and you're like oh what do i do here and one point you have to carry a cactus from one room to another to uh, put on top of a button, but the button is a bit higher up, so what do you do? You can't jump with a bucket. You need to activate another button to make a balloon appear, and then you jump off the balloon while holding the uh, the cactus, and you put the cactus on top of the button, stuff like that. You actually do different stuff. That you have all this flavor, of course, in all of the, uh, the rooms, but you also have the gameplay flavor. You have both. Really well done. Really well done. I really like this stage. And it also has two timepieces, I think. One for, I don't even know if one is a timepiece, but you collect wall tickets and you and you just try and go through all of the rooms. And the tickets are actually really well hidden. You actually need to do a lot of like looking around and being very attentive to what's going on in each st in all the different rooms to figure out where all the different um, tickets are. I really, and there's also a few rooms that aren't even part of the like main route that are like side rooms where you can get bonus stuff and maybe find a ticket here and there. I really like the stage, really great stage, but once again to reiterate, any of these three maps in the top three could, in your opinion, be number one or number two, like I said. But to me, the Monsoon is the one that clinched it out. So yeah, that was that one for this time. Maybe in the future, if it continues going on like this, I might be doing more top fives if I just can't find 10 good stages. Like, I think there were even only like 11 stages released in the second uh, November half, so, huh, didn't really make it very easy for me. Well, I guess I just did a top five instead, which was all right. I mean, if I if I did like a top ten, like the lower five would have just been maps where I've been like, oh yeah, it's just a standard time with map where you just do a bunch of jumps and that's about it. No, not really anything too special. Of course, Platform Panic would have been number six, but the other four at least would have just been very basic, boring stuff. So yeah, that was that. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.